Hey everyone, this is Tisk Junkie, and today I'm back for a new type of video that I have just decided to call Standard Blu-ray Update. And basically what this is, is that I've started buying a couple of standard keep case Blu-rays, which aren't all that fun to, you know, show on the website or do, like, you know, detailed reviews of, so, uh, just gonna go through them and, like, every now and then when I've picked up some new, I'm, I'm just, you know, kind of browse the collection once again and sort of mention why I picked them up and... So anyway, let's get started. Now, the reason I haven't done this before is because I haven't actually owned a lot of these standard type Blu-rays before. Uh, and most of these were actually picked up just during the last few days because, uh, you know, I went to this crazy sale. It was in a rental store that was sort of going belly up and I ended up picking up eight Blu-rays and they cost me like two and a half euro a piece. So, yeah, that's pretty much why I suddenly got all of these Blu-rays and I figured out when I run through them. So first up, we got The Strangers with Liv Tyler and Scott Speedman. And this is a pretty good thriller, horror. I found it, you know, pretty cool. I would actually love to see a sequel of this because, you know, it did kind of set up an interesting uh, set of antagonists and then, you know, it sort of just ended. So, uh, yeah, a uh, really cool movie. Suggest you check this out. This one also had a bit of special features on it, so... Uh, really have to pick that up. Next we got The Last House on the Left, obviously the remake from 2009 I think it is. And you know I actually really like this and I haven't seen the original uh, Last House on the Left. been planning to, I just haven't gotten around to it. Uh, but I found this uh, to be a really good horror movie. Um, this one also had a little bit of special features, some deleted scenes and sort of a behind the scenes featurette. So there we go. Then we got the Brothers Bloom. This was also one of those cheapy pickups that I got from the rental store, and this is actually still sealed. Uh, and you know, it isn't a rental uh, Blu-ray. I don't know if there are actually rental Blu-rays. Most of these that I actually did pick up at the rental store were just were just normal Blu-rays, but then they had sort of put a rental-only sticker on them, so I just peel that off, and then you know, it's just a standard Blu-ray. So uh, now I have seen this movie. I haven't seen it on Blu-ray. Uh, but it's just a bare bones release, so I'm not sure if I'm gonna keep this or sell it. But I just thought, hey, I'd, I'll pick it up. And we got Bronson. Haven't seen this one. Got a commentary, making of, uh, kind of an introduction, and uh, some other kind of special feature there. So yeah, looking forward to seeing this one. And we have City of Ember. Now, the thing is, I can't really recall why I picked this up. I remember for some reason, you know, like putting on putting it on like my memory list, sort of thinking that, you know, I should check this out. And I actually thought that it was like some director I really liked, you know, like Terry Gilliam or whatever. But yeah, I have no idea why I picked this up. It seems it was lodged in my memory for some reason. Maybe I saw a trailer of it and it seemed like sort of an interesting like fantasy, I don't know. So it's got Bill Murray, Tim Robbins. Yeah, I don't really know much about it yet. You know that's one of those odd, sort of, you know, like Tim Burton, Terry Gilliam, some kind of odd reality, like Alice in Wonderland stuff. Yeah, I had no idea. Next up, we got Sleuth. And, uh, you know, this is obviously the Swedish title. Uh, I haven't seen this movie. This is probably the movie that was in the worst shape in terms of the rental copies. It's got a bit of uh, smudges, and I had to peel off, like, a rental sticker, so it's still... Yeah, I wasn't crazy about picking these up, but I basically thought, you know, I'll buy it for that price, watch it, and, you know, if I feel like it, I might as well sell it. Could get a couple of bucks back, you know. I mean, after all, this Blu-ray, and fuck, who's not gonna buy a Blu-ray for two and a half euros, right? Oh, and this one also has uh, a little bit of special features there, so that's always good. Next up, we got Dead Snow, or Dead Snow, as it's called in Sweden. Uh, this is a uh, Norwegian zombie horror splatter type movie, and you know, that's not my particular favorite type of genre. Uh, but I did hear a lot of good things about this. Uh, it also came with uh, a bunch of special features, so I figured, what the hell, hasn't even been rented out, so, you know. Next up we got My Body Valentine 3D, which actually comes with uh, this sort of 3D lenticular effect. Uh, which is just just a thin piece of plastic that they glued on the outside of the Blu-ray case. This was kind of odd, I thought. See, they actually got a paper behind it, so they got the regular paper artwork, but it's just plain white, so... 
Just a bit of an odd side note there. Now I have seen this movie, and I have seen the original as well. I wasn't crazy about either of them, you know, I thought they were they were pretty decent in their own right, the both of them. I basically just picked it up because it was so cheap, and I figured, you know, yeah, I might be able to sell it, or I'll give it away, or whatever. Just grab the opportunity. And now, uh, all those Blu-rays were the ones I picked up at the rental store, so now I'll just see what else I got. Here we got the Red Riding trilogy. I haven't watched this, but I've heard some good things about it. And uh, I went by a store called Media Markt, and they sort of had like a crazy sale. Uh, so I got each of these for roughly 5 euro, uh, you know, 5 euro a piece. Uh, and normally they would sell for like 15 euro a piece here in Sweden, so that's pretty cool. So you got Red Riding 1983, Red Riding 1980, and Red Riding 1974. So obviously in the reverse order if you want to get chronologically correct. And next up we got one of those Blu-rays that I was really determined to pick up. And this is Mad Max 2, The Road Warrior. Now, the reason I wanted to get this is because it has never really been presented in its full uncut version on DVD. There is a very, very old Japanese out-of-print uh, release, which is the fully uncut version. Uh, you know, all the standard DVDs apart from that in every country, and I don't care what you say, you're just flat out wrong if you're going to debate me on this. Uh, I know there's a lot of editions out there that are even labeled, like, you know, original uncut version, no, but they're not, okay, so just stop calling them uncut, for fucking sake. And I'm not entirely sure what the original, you know, what the story about that is, why they are cut the way they are. Uh, now, it isn't, you know, it doesn't have a lot of cuts to it. Uh, it's basically missing like, you know, some small sensory moments, uh, I mean, we're talking like seconds here. You're not really missing out, but, you know, I've always... I remember seeing the fully uncut version on TV here in Sweden, and I remember it so, you know, vividly from my younger days. And so when I sat down to watch the DVD, which was uncut, uh, I was just blown away, like, okay, why the fuck does this say uncut? Because it's clearly not uncut. But anyway, if you want to get the uncut version, you can check out uh, The Road Warrior on Blu-ray, because it actually is uncut. And also, it actually has some special features. So we got a new commentary track, uh, some kind of introduction, and the trailer. Yay, so much for special features. But it's something, you know, so that's good. Next up, we got two Blu-rays, which I received as a gift very recently, and they were from Corey Hatfield. I did a unboxing of a package he sent me. So we got Oceans 11 and Oceans 13, and both of these are the American releases, so uh, yeah, if anyone has Oceans 12 and you just got it lying around and want to send it to me, that would be really appreciated, because right now I just got 11 and 13, and I haven't seen 12 and 13, so I'm sort of waiting to pick up the 12 before I do like an Oceans marathon, if that makes any sense. But anyway, that's it for my standard Blu-ray update this time. And so before I go, I just should just mention quickly, just so there's no confusion, uh, the Ocean's 11 and Ocean's 13, those are American, Mad Max is from the UK, and all the rest are just Swedish editions. But anyway, that's it for me today, hope you all enjoyed this, and I'll see you all next time.